Good beautiful morning. This is Thursday morning. I'm here with Mike. He's right over there and we are at the Air Force Museum. We're going to be checking this out before the ham fest and just I don't know what I'm in for. It's just going to be a surprise. It's going to be awesome. I did see an A-10 and I want to go see the A-10. Ooh, I want to go see the A-10. Um, but it's going to be fun. So hang on. And we are in, this is a free museum to the public. And uh, Mike went ahead and donated uh, some uh, money. So thank you for that. And I bought drinks for us. Yes, and probably meals. This is the National Museum for the United States Air Force. And they have all uh, World War II planes and even I think a mock-up of the Wright brothers all the way up to current day flight planes. So can't wait to get into this. to World War I planes now. That is a beautiful German plane, triplane up there. Wow. We got a Model T ambulance. Nice. Don't back up, man. <laughs> this is the uh, training aircraft they had for uh, new pilots during World War II. I recognize it because I believe these are the um, L3 training crafts they made and uh, they had one at the Arlington um, plant that I worked at, at in college. So <laughs> I see one here. That's so cool. I'm going to hear a lot of that. That's so cool. Here we have a Japanese Zero. Wow. And this is a B-25 bomber. Wow. These guys were brave. On that badge service, the Apple service, they do have a great World War II show about the um, bomber uh, flight squads. It's like Great Skies, something like that. Amazing show, go ahead and watch it, even though it's on that other service, but it's still a great show. I saw a very interesting documentary about nose art on bombers, especially on uh, World War II bombers. Um, it came down as a famous edict from the higher generals that they had to start covering up or repainting over all the nose art on the bombers. So it is actually very rare these days to see um, nose art on bombers, but um, there's some famous pictures out there. And talking about ballsy, uh -huh. <laughs> Mike is like, nope, 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 nope be the ones to be fitting inside that ball turret. Oh man, absolutely no room. Mike's smaller than me. They literally had their legs wrapped around the barrel. Oh wow, <laughs> that is their position? Jeez. Spitfighter, wow. And a famous B-17, nice. I just finished looking up in the bomb bay doors here. And I didn't realize how many little bombs they carried. This one is in the display has five inside the bomb bay, and these are big, big bombs. And I thought they really carried more. Here she is, one of my favorite World War II aircrafts, a P-51 Mustang in all her beauty. Wow. Six machine guns, three on each wing. Just amazing, amazing aircraft. Thankfully, these uh, Jet A's planes, first Jet A planes by Germany, were at the tail end of the war. If they were able to mass produce these, they would have taken back air superiority. I am shocked that they have one of these. Oh my God. <laughs> That's awesome. Now this is boxcar. This plane is the one that's dropped the second atom bomb on Japan. I'm just in awe of the history they have here, and I can't believe they have this plane. And there is a mock-up of Fat Man. It's what they dropped on this plane. And this was the conventional explosive sphere to detonate the nuclear core. Unlike Little Boy over here, this was a gun type of a nuclear explosion where it shot a uh, smaller cylindrical core into a secondary mass, causing the nuclear explosion and chain reaction. And here we have a MiG flown by North Koreans during the Korean War, and then the U.S. counterpart offer combative counterpart. This is the U.S. Saber. Ooh, look at that scorch marks from the guns. And there she is the monstrous B-52. We are like way far away and she's still huge. The light in here is a little tense, but I'm sorry for that. But this is the second SR-71 that I have seen 
Such a beautiful plain. The first one I saw was up in Huntsville, Alabama, outside of their uh, space museum. And uh, man, I, I, I can't get enough of this plane. A little out of place, but still historically important. We got the Berlin Wall sections. I'm just, we're just in awe and, and in awe. And we have one of the first stealth bombers ever developed here, an F-11 Nighthawk. And we're just gonna get cooler after this. We got some awesome crafts coming up. And one of the most modern aircrafts that I, 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 I love, I love so much, is the A-10 Warthog, or by its current name, the Thunderbolt. Talking about, they don't build them like they used to. Um, this plane has flown with wings shot off, engines missing, uh, engine missing, not both, and it was able to make successful landings. Um, I still like this uh, original name, the Warhog, because uh, the early versions of this, it was notoriously known for landing and uh, stopping kind of too fast and it's nosing into the ground and keeps digging down to the ground, like a Warhog. Thunderbolt, a plane this ugly badass needs to have a badass moniker. Look at that gun. They literally took a gun on and they said, we want a plane around this. It is literally the middle and most of the fuselage. Another special aircraft close to my heart because growing up in Arlington, the main manufacturing plant for these is located in Arlington, Texas. The V-22 Osprey and my dad has worked on the earlier versions of these. Um, he started designing something to do with the, um, the inner shafts, how they connect, a gearbox in there somewhere. But it's probably revisions ago, but still, this craft is so cool. Now this girl behind me is the next addition into stealth bombing. It is the B-2 after the F-11. She is huge and so sleek and smooth. We almost left Hangar 3 here without looking up. And don't forget to look up while you're out here because we would have missed this U-2 on display. And look at that wingspan. It's so like a glider. That's because it flies so high in the atmosphere, one of the highest flying planes that we have, that is just not a lot of air up there and it needs a tremendous wingspan to get up there and actually create lift for the plane. Wow. We're about to go on one of the most famous Air Force Ones um, they have. This is the one that carried J.F. Kennedy's bodies back and also sworn in the new President Lyndon Johnson um, after the assassination of JFK. This is the first plane carried by the presidents to feature the modern design theme that we know of Air Force One, commissioned by President um, JFK. Let's go ahead and take a look. Look at that, they have an actual engineering station for the flight engineer. Where's the radios? There's the radios. We can barely see them. Now this is the communication panel. Look at all that for the president and uh, all the modern electronics. Wow. It is an aerial sextant. That's so cool and you thought we'll just be seeing airplanes. Now we get into the space part of the exhibit and we have two capsules, three capsules actually on display. We got one from Mercury and then Gemini. You can tell the Mercury ones because they are single, single seaters. Then the Gemini capsules are two seaters. And then of course, then you have the Apollo capsule. <laughs> and this is the NASA X-15 experimental hypersonic aircraft and this was dropped from a plane and then had to land in mostly deserts. This is the first plane to almost really escape the atmosphere and had to use um, control thrusters like we do on these space shuttles and all the other spacecrafts to uh, orientate itself. Um, oh, I'm geeking out, this is so cool. Let's see if I can read it. I can't, I can't pronounce that. There it is. That's the name. This is one of the wildest experimental crafts we ever created and it kicked off the USA or the UFO craze a little bit when photos of it surfaced, let alone didn't really get off of ground with a foot or two, but dang. 
Now this is a forerunner to the SR71, the YF12A. I got nothing else to say, it's just so cool. Man, oh man, man, that was a blast. We were here for, uh, I don't know, four hours. We walked the whole thing, but we did not absorb the whole thing. I also picked up my swag, and uh, when you're there at the gift shop, go ahead and round up and help support the museum, because this is completely free. So um, if you have family, friends, kids, this is definitely a place to come check out before the ham fest. Well, um, I, this is ten, probably going to be its own video now. Um, thank you all for watching. This, this has been amazing. Not my normal tank radio episode, but I just had to share this. This was too much fun, too much information. And just look at all those cool planes. Look at that. That's my picture right there. <laughs> As always, y'all, go forth and conquer.